Amazon's The Wheel of Time has its premiere at the end of this week, and as many of you know, I've recently jumped into the franchise myself. As of this recording, I'm only on book 7 of The Wheel of Time, but I'm really enjoying it so far and can't wait to see how it ends. That said, however, I'm quite aware that many of you have not read the first Wheel of Time book before watching the new Amazon Prime show. You may be interested in the show and may really want to get into the story, but there's always that issue when you jump into a franchise completely blind. You never really know what's going on, especially if it's a brand new adaptation. Sure, you could just tough it out until things start clicking into place, but why give yourself the headache? That's why I've decided to make this a little easier on you guys. In today's video, I'll be giving you an overview of the setting and the start of the story before you jump in. And don't worry, this will be spoiler free when it comes to the overall plot. I will mention world building details and some information up to the prologue of book 1, but it's purely to help set the scene and I will not touch on any real plot points in this video. So without any further delay, let's jump right in. The wheel of time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that become legend. Legend fades to myth, and even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave it birth comes again. You see, time is not a straight line. It is a wheel that spins and repeats and weaves the pattern of destiny over and over again. In an age thousands of years past, called the Age of Legends, men and women existed who could wield great power. They used their magical prowess to push humanity into a utopian age of prosperity and abundance. These men and women were called Aes Sedai, or Servants of All, and it was their duty to protect and guide humanity with their awesome power. The Aes Sedai could access a source of power which they used to fuel their magic. This source of power was split in half, one of which men could access and the other was usable by women. The male half of the One Power is called Saidin, and the female half of the One Power is called Saidar. And only through the collaboration of both men and women could the Aes Sedai work truly magnificent feats of magic. But while they wielded great power, they were also merely human and prone to human faults and flaws. Thus, in the closing days of the Age of Legends, these Aes Sedai took their experiments with magic a little too far. They tore a hole in the fabric of reality, a hole directly into the prison of a vast evil force known as the Dark One. The Dark One seeks only to destroy the wheel of time and to end its endless spinning of the pattern that makes an age, and to reforge the cyclical nature of time in its own image. With the Dark One unleashed, an all-out war broke out between the Aes Sedai and the forces of the light and the Dark One's own forces. In this war, one man stood out. One Aes Sedai rose up and led his companions to the Dark One's very own prison. This man was called Luz Theron Telamon, and he was known across the land as the Dragon. The Dragon took his forces, marched on the Dark One's prison, and with their help sealed it back into its prison, putting an end to the war. Unfortunately, the Dark One would not be easily defeated. In the final moments, as it was being sealed, the Dark One lashed out and tainted the male half of the One Power, Saidin. This taint, which forever marks the male half of the One Power, did not stop the men from accessing their power. Instead, it slowly caused them to go insane as they used the power. Thus, even with the Dark One sealed up and the war being won, humanity still faced calamity. All the male Aes Sedai, these figures of immense magical power, began to go mad and started lashing out with the power. These were essentially walking nuclear warheads who now started lashing out and destroying things with the power due to completely losing their sanity. The destruction this caused was so great that it literally broke the world. Entire continents shifted, oceans boiled away, and where there were once open plains, now mountains stood. For a very long time, the world remained in a constant state of change as male Aes Sedai went mad and destroyed the landscape. Only through the combined efforts of all the female Aes Sedai could they put an end to it. All the mad male Aes Sedai were hunted down and defeated, and finally the world could know peace. The world started to settle, 
and the landscape stopped its constant state of flux. Humanity was decimated, but it would live. This happened 3000 years ago, and the Dark One has been locked in his prison ever since. But prophecy foretells that there will come a day where the dragon will be reborn as the seals on the Dark One's prison weakens. There will come a day where Luz Theron Telamon will be reincarnated to fight in the final battle against the Dark One. The rebirth of the dragon heralds the salvation of humanity from the influence of the Dark One but also heralds once again the destruction of the world. The Dragon Reborn will save the world, and the Dragon Reborn will break the world. Which brings us to where our story begins. The Wheel of Time has turned, and the Dragon has been reborn. A modern Aes Sedai is travelling the land with her companion, searching for the Dragon Reborn. She must find the reincarnation of the Dragon Reborn and guide them to victory against the Dark One. Unfortunately, the Dark One has sensed the rebirth of its old foe and is now looking to destroy them before there's even a chance of retaliation. This Aes Sedai must figure out who the Dragon Reborn is before the Dark One can get to them, for without the Dragon, humanity loses any hope of survival. Unfortunately, with the Dragon, humanity faces its own potential doom. But that has been about it from me for today guys, thank you very much for watching, my name has been Raven and I will see you all next time, take care everybody.